Welcome back, my friends. Chrysler parent Stellantis offering buyouts to 33,500 U.S. employees. Stellantis said it will offer buyouts to 31,000 hourly employees and 2,500 salaried non-union U.S. employees. The global automaker is attempting to cut costs and headcount. The buyouts are the latest cuts for the U.S. auto industry. Earlier this year, Stellantis announced that its lead Jeep production factory will shut down on February 28. That headline will send shockwaves reverberating around Detroit. The factory currently builds the Jeep Cherokee SUV. The Jeep Cherokee is one of Stellantis' best-selling vehicles. And they are shutting down production. The affected employees will be placed on indefinite layoffs, Stellantis said. This was a difficult but necessary action, said Stellantis. Friends, it is truly a time of uncertainty in the United States. What does this mean for the future of the car industry? What does it mean for the economy? And, what does this mean for the future of the United States? But, before we get into all of that, please press the like button and leave a comment below. We would love to hear from you. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you are notified of upcoming videos. And, before we continue, a word from the sponsor of this video. Today's sponsor is InnerLife.com, creator of the InnerLife STS system. InnerLife STS is a cloud mobile platform for mental health care and its integration with primary medical care. InnerLife STS is designed for assessment, data collection and analytics, documentation, and progress tracking. InnerLife STS creates and composes conceptualized narratives and builds them into professional-grade reports. These reports are designed for use by mental health professionals, primary care physicians, justice system professionals and universities and include mental health assessment reports, mental health treatment reports, and treatment progress reports. And InnerLife STS uses doctor-selected pseudonames for all patients. So, only the healthcare professional knows the patient identity. Stellantis is offering voluntary buyouts to about 33,500 U.S. employees, as the global automaker attempts to cut costs and headcount. Stellantis is a multinational automotive corporation formed in 2021 through the merger of two major automobile manufacturers, the French PSA Group and the Italian-American Fiat Chrysler Automobiles FCA. The company has its headquarters in Amsterdam, Netherlands. Stellantis is now the fourth largest automobile manufacturer in the world in terms of annual revenue and production volume. It has a diverse portfolio of 14 brands, including Fiat, Jeep, Chrysler, Peugeot, Citroën, Opel, and Alfa Romeo, among others. Stellantis products range from cars and trucks to commercial vehicles and luxury vehicles. The merger was announced in late 2019, and the two companies finalized the deal in January 2021. The merger was aimed at creating a stronger, more competitive player in the global automotive industry by combining the strengths and resources of both companies. And now, Stellantis offering buyouts to 33,500 U.S. employees. The buyouts will be offered to 31,000 hourly employees with at least one year of employment and 2,500 salaried, non-union employees who have 15 or more years with the company, the automaker said Wednesday. The company also is extending buyout offers to some employees in Canada, but did not disclose that number. In response to today's increasingly competitive global market conditions and the necessary shift to electrification, Stellantis is thoroughly reviewing its North American operations to improve efficiency, reduce costs and protect the competitiveness of our products to allow for further strategic investments to support our transformation, the company said in a statement. The buyouts are the latest cuts for the auto industry. General Motors earlier this year offered buyouts to a majority of its salaried employees following performance-related layoffs, while Ford Motor recently announced significant job cuts in Europe. Stellantis earlier this year also idled a Jeep plant in Illinois, placing about 1,200 workers on indefinite layoffs. Those employees were told they would be prioritized to fill needed positions vacated through the buyouts. Two different offers will be given to union-represented employees based on their seniority, including $50,000 for pension-eligible employees hired before an October 2007 contract agreement between the company and the United Auto Workers Union. The other buyout program will be offered to workers with at least one year of service, with payments based on their years of employment. The local UAW unit on Tuesday said Stellantis wants to cut approximately 3,500 skilled in production jobs in the voluntary offer. UAW President Sean Fain called the company's plans to reduce its hourly workforce, even through voluntary buyouts, a slap in the face. Stellantis' push to cut thousands of jobs while raking in billions in profits is disgusting, Fain said in a statement. 
A spokeswoman for Stellantis declined to comment on whether the automaker plans to conduct involuntary layoffs if not enough employees take the buyout offers. Stellantis has about 56,000 workers in the U.S. Roughly 5,000 salaried GM employees opted for its buyout program, which was offered to a majority of the company's 58,000 white-collar employees. The worldwide auto giant says that it needs to cut costs as it invests in electric vehicles. Well, that is interesting. It was only a couple of months ago that the Stellantis CEO announced a new electric Jeep. The transatlantic automaker was formerly known as Fiat Chrysler. And, if you were old enough, you probably remember when Chrysler was owned by Daimler. It was called Daimler Chrysler at that time. If you were really old, you probably remember when Chrysler was an independent Detroit automaker. Sales of Jeep Cherokees are down by 61% through Q3 of this year. That sales drop is more severe than for any other vehicle in Jeep's product line. There could be other reasons for the sudden shutdown. Fears of a recession. Collective bargaining next year with the United Auto Workers Union. And don't forget the regular whipping boy, the weak macroeconomic environment. UAW negotiations with the Detroit automakers has led to plant closures in the past. In 2018, Crosstown rival General Motors announced plans to potentially close several facilities. But only one of the major assembly plants was actually closed. That was the Lordstown Assembly in Ohio. And, if you follow the car industry, you probably remember that the Lordstown plant was sold. It was actually sold to Lordstown Motors which just shipped its first electric pickup truck made at the plant. If you follow this channel, you already know that the auto industry has been generating a fair amount of news recently. But the recent news has been mostly about new electric vehicle announcements. And, of course, the sky-high prices of cars these days. Actually, car prices seem to have been in a bubble since the start of the pandemic. But, only recently has that bubble been starting to pop. And, the Belvedere Illinois Jeep plant will probably go down as the event that started the car bubble. If you recall from earlier this year, there has been a parade of new electric vehicles for the United States continues. Stellantis has just introduced a new electric vehicle that stirred up some excitement. Just as a reminder, Stellantis is based in Amsterdam in the Netherlands. Stellantis owns Jeep, Chrysler, Dodge, and Ram in the United States. And, for the most part, Stellantis seems to have its act together with its US brands. A couple of months ago, Stellantis CEO Carlos Taveras introduced the all-new Jeep Avenger electric SUV. The new Jeep Avenger puts a stake in the ground. It aims to challenge Tesla, Ford, and General Motors in what is becoming an electric vehicle arms race in the United States. Stellantis introduced what it is calling the first pure EV Jeep. The new Jeep Avenger was just introduced by Stellantis CEO Carlos Taveras at the Paris Motor Show. Sneak peek details of the new Jeep were first published last month. According to Stellantis, the Jeep Avenger's targeted electric range is 400 kilometers, or a little under 249 miles. Stellantis will use its own sites to generate half the energy it needs for manufacturing by the middle of this decade, Stellantis CEO Carlos Taveras told reporters. We have decided the appropriate investments for Stellantis to be able, from a manufacturing standpoint, in 2025 to produce 50% of our energy needs within our own sites, said Carlos Taveras at the Paris Motor Show. Stellantis brands also include Fiat, Chrysler and Citroën. The new Jeep Avenger is scheduled to arrive in showrooms next year. Stellantis is targeting all passenger sales in Europe to be battery electric vehicles by the year 2030. In the United States, Stellantis is targeting 50% passenger car and light-duty truck battery electric vehicle sales mix by 2030. All of this comes at a time when climate change continues to wreak havoc on the environment. These targets come as major economies set out strategies to move away from the internal combustion engine. And to focus on battery electric vehicles instead. Individual countries and U.S. states are legislating a change away from internal combustion vehicles. The European Union has banned sale of new diesel and gasoline vehicles starting in 2035. The UK, which brexited two years ago, has set similar targets. Tesla has led the way with a now well-known and very popular lineup of electric vehicles. Legacy Detroit automakers are changing their stripes and joining into the electric vehicle parade. A strategy to focus on its own energy supplies is not unique to Stellantis. Mercedes-Benz CEO Ola Kalinius set a similar goal for his company. Mercedes plans to build a wind farm somewhere in northern Germany. 
Meanwhile, the all-new Jeep Avenger electric SUV has generated a lot of buzz at the Paris Motor Show. The Jeep Avenger is a small SUV powered by 400-volt electric drive system. The Jeep Avenger announcement comes after General Motors CEO Mary Barra has announced that the company will transition to an all-electric product line. Starting in the fall of 2023, the transition begins in earnest with the all-electric Chevrolet Equinox EV. The Chevy Equinox EV price range will start at $30,000. At that price, General Motors expects the Chevy Equinox EV to be a high-volume, mass-market vehicle. Then, by 2035, all General Motors vehicles will be electric. This rollout plan is General Motors' second chance at trying to become the mass-market leader in the electric vehicle market. The $30,000 price tag may seem high. But no car makers have been able to make an electric vehicle priced that low so far. But, what do you think? Please press the like button and leave a comment below. We would love to hear from you. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you are notified of upcoming videos. Please share this video on social media. Thank you for watching.